This is Commander Nunez with the Challenger Center for Space Science Education coming at you from Florida Space Coast. We're at Kennedy Space Center to get you as close as possible to the launch of the Space Shuttle. Come along as we take you on a quick tour around Kennedy Space Center before getting you some front row seats to one of the most amazing things you could see. We'll hop on the bus and your first stop is the Vehicle Assembly Building, also known as the VAB. It is one of the largest buildings in the world originally built for the assembly of Apollo mission Saturn launch vehicles and later modified to support space shuttle operations. Inside the VAB, the solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, the external fuel tank, and the orbiter are mated into the space shuttle. When assembly and checkouts are complete, the crawler transporter enters the picture. Kennedy Space Center has two crawler transporters, the crawler transporters previously used to move the assembled Apollo Saturn from the VAB to the launch pad are now used for transporting shuttle vehicles. Each vehicle consists of four double track crawlers, each 3 meters or 10 feet high and 12 meters or 41 feet long. Each of the eight tracks on the vehicle contains 57 shoes per track and each tread shoe weighs about 0.9 metric tons or 1 ton. When they were built, the Kennedy Space Center crawlers were the largest tracked vehicles ever made, now surpassed by the Bagger 288 German excavator. Maximum speed is about 1.6 kilometers or 1 mile per hour loaded and about 3.2 kilometers or 2 miles per hour unloaded. Vehicle assembly building to launch pad trip time with the mobile launch platform is about 5 hours. The top of the orbiter is kept vertical within plus or minus 10 minutes of arc, about the diameter of a basketball, throughout the journey. Leveling systems within the crawler keeps the platform level while negotiating the 5% ramp leading up to the pad surface. Launch Complex 39, Pad A and Pad B were originally designed to support, you guessed it, the Apollo program and were modified for the space shuttle launch operations. Major changes included the construction of a new fixed service structure, addition of a rotating service structure, and the replacement of the Saturn flame deflectors with three new flame deflectors. The fixed surface structure is topped by a 24.4 meter or 80 foot tall fiberglass lightning mast grounded by a 335 meter, about 1100 foot cables that are anchored north and south of the pad. The mast provides lightning protection for pad structures and the space shuttle. The rotating service structure accommodates the loading of payloads vertically at the pad. It is mounted on a semicircular track which allows it to rotate through an arc of 120 degrees on a radius of 36.6 .6 meters or about 120 feet. The rotating service structure pivots from a hinge on the fixed service structure until the rotating service structure spacecraft changing room fits flush on the orbiter's cargo bay. This room allows payloads to be installed or serviced under contamination-free or clean room conditions. Everything looks like it's a go. We just have to cross our fingers and hope for an early morning launch. We return to Kennedy Space Center very early, but we're not the first ones there. But we said we'll get you some front row seats. Well, as the final inspection team is on the pad looking for ice and frost built up on the external tank, the STS-131 crew leaves the crew quarters at the operations and checkout building and boards the Astrovan to head over to launch pad 39A. As the astronauts who are now strapped in and the crowd continue the countdown, you could not script what happened next any better. The International Space Station crossed right in front of the moon as it passed overhead with about 15 minutes left to go in the countdown. Strapped in are Commander Alan Pointexter, Pilot James Dutton, Mission Specialist Richard Mastracchio, Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson, Mission Specialist Naoko Yamazaki, Mission Specialist Clayton Anderson, and Educator Astronaut Dorothy M. Metcalf Lindenberger. We hope you're strapped in too. Sit back and enjoy the launch of STS-131. T minus 15 seconds and the sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go for main to start. Three engines up and ready. Three, two, one. Zero. Booster ignition. And liftoff of Discovery, blazing a trail to scientific discoveries of the Space Station. Yeah, the camera doesn't do it justice.
three. Go ahead and throttle up. The shuttle weighed more than four and a half million pounds, and now uh, one minute and 27 seconds into the flight, the main engines and solid rocket boosters have reduced that weight by about half. Solid rocket, bo rocket boosters alone are burning, burning 11,000 pounds of propeller per second, and the external tank is now 3,000 pounds lighter than when it began. Discovery is now 21 miles away from its launch pad and uh, 22 miles in altitude, traveling. 2,700 miles per hour. All three main engines are working just as expected. The three fuel cells are generating power and three auxiliary power units are all producing pressure. In short, everything performing well. Two minutes and seven seconds into the STS-131 mission. Booster officer in the Mission Control Center has confirmed the solid rocket booster separation. All systems continue to continue to function well. Just like that, the Discovery is on her way to the International Space Station. Space Shuttle Discovery launched at 6.21 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on April 5, 2010 from Launch Pad 39A. The mission marked the longest flight for Space Shuttle Discovery. The primary payload was a multi-purpose logistics module loaded with supplies and equipment for the International Space Station. The mission also removed and replaced an ammonia tank outside the station on the S-1 truss. STS-131 was the final Space Shuttle mission with a seven-person crew. It was also the final space shuttle mission that contained any rookie astronauts. All remaining scheduled missions will have all veteran crews. STS-131 was only the third mission in the space shuttle program to carry three female astronauts. With the three female crew members arriving on board Discovery and Expedition 23 flight engineer Tracy Caldwell Dyson at the station, the STS-131 mission marked the first time that four women had been in space at one time. Just like that, 15 days and 6 million miles later, Space Shuttle Discovery, with her crew of seven, concluded their journey on Tuesday, April 20th at 9.08 a.m. with a perfect landing at Kennedy Space Center. Only three shuttle missions remain before NASA retires the fleet. Atlantis is already on the launch pad for a liftoff targeted for May 14th, 2010. We're hoping we got you close, but do whatever you can to see one live. This is Commander Nunez with the Challenger Center for Space Science Education in Alexandria, Virginia, over and out.